Hello guys, Ivandro Fuzari here with another video for you. How are you? I hope all of you are wonderfully well. Today bring a very cool video analyzing the new opening. Is there a spoiler here for those who only follow the manga? Will it be? Well, there are some transitions there that are kind of suspicious, kind of strange what some say. So watch until the end because I think it will work out. It generates good theories and look at that wonderful thing. The Egghead Dark was announced to be broadcast weekly on Netflix. That's surreal. I talked about speaking my PR, guys. That's surreal. See this recognition of the wall of Opus. So if you have Netflix, we'll be able to watch firsthand. The weekly releases, I'm very happy with this. And this opening has some very interesting things. We will finalize the court. The court, I can't show it here for... I can't show you due to copyright issues, but I'll grab some frames and we'll... And goes debating, theorizing, and chatting a little bit about them, okay? If you're new to the channel and want to know more about the world of Outpiece, watch the video. If you like it, I ask you to subscribe. If you're already from the worst generation, tell them that you're from the worst generation. To give a big smack on the or like do button. Do not offer this video now with you all and about the hidden secrets of the new opening We're in the world. What is this? So let's go, guys. I start by saying that for me is the best One Piece opening, not only because it has the music of Hiroshi Kitadani, who is the creator. Around there from We Are, which is of the best song the of... But what really caught my eye was the art style. The first time I saw the opening, I said, wow, this here is very similar to an anime that I like a lot. Sony Boy. And then I did a little research and found out that Kisuke Mori, who is the art director, also worked on Sony Boy. So that's why I ended up liking it a lot, I guess. This style of art is beautiful. In one year, we've had a small sample, so those were the best episodes of the whole environment. And this opening comes to give a taste of what we're going to have in Egghead. I hope they go for this style of animation, because it's a very current, very different style. Very beautiful, totally dynamic, and in the fight scenes especially. It's magnificent. In this opening, you even get a taste, a taste of transitions that are fantastic, magnificent, so... They use a lot of the scenarios perspective, I liked it a lot, of the chosen animation style and I hope the whole arc goes in this direction. So I won't go far in saying that this opening production here is one of the most aesthetically or some of the most beautiful ever made. For One Piece. For you to have a taste, I will anticipate here a scene that we see later in the opening, but I think it's worth starting with it to show the originality, the direction that is magnificent and also the art of this part of putting Luffy walking and dressing all his clothes during his journey. Guys, are two years of travel for Luffy. Two years for us, more than 25, right, Captains? It's 30 years, there are people out there who are already parents, maybe even grandparents following the world of office. Then you see this transition of a few seconds. It's exciting because it ends up catching you because you've been present in each of them. It was one of the scenes that I found the most... Placed here in this opening, our opening already starts giving a small preview, a small spoiler, which is the Vega Force, the giant robot appearing and rescuing the gang. Along with the sea monsters, guys, this here is a spoiler. There's going to be a lot of spoilers in this opening if you only follow the animation. Samba. Of course, there's going to be the whole anime has that. From the earliest times, there's a spoiler in the opening. But what's the difference? If you only watch the anime, it's only a spoiler if they give you a context of what it is, what's happening. Being for in those who manga, saw, it says, my God, they're showing but already. for those who only follow the anime, it's just a robot appearing that you don't even know how it is fit in when it's going to appear. So this happens quite a lot, and you wonder why they put this in the animation. Is there an explanation? Yes, there is. In Japan, much of the audience, uh, the majority, really follow the manga outside Japan. In the West, animes are much more famous. That's a fact. You can take any. Video about the animation here will get a lot more views than me talking about the manga. Because over in Japan, uh, reading culture comes first, so they don't mind having these opening scenes putting in some spoilers. Got it. Now here in the West, it's different. It's the opposite. Animation is much more successful than the manga. Then we get a look at all the satellites being introduced and also Vegapunk's design that, in my humble opinion, he is a silly funny design, but it's the best design that Oda has done in recent years. I made the foundations ready. It's really something I didn't expect, but at the same time, I imagined for Vegapunk this more caricature thing, and he taking reference from various scientists, from Einstein, we have Newton's apple here. There's plenty. Something about Tesla, all the scientists, even Oppenheimer has a Hyper-G. He gathered several scientists and composed this glimpse crazy beyond belief that suited this character well. It's quite different from other figures, not even Raizo, he does very well. When they said he introduced, nest, huh? seriously, right? I'm That's looking for ninja, is. and we were excited a just nest. like this. The Sopra there thinking that the lightning appeared, the Ligia B10 appeared. 
Oh, Hanzo, with his book, uh, and him. his Vega Punk caricature. Yes, but his look is really cool. It's cool, and here in the animation, I'm sure it will be even more brilliant. After this, we have the introduction of CP0. When they, they arrive on the island, and also the scene that I found quite curious, which is the S-Shark being hit by Nami, already diving into the ground, showing a ah. bit about his fruits, this green blood thing. Uh, it really needs to be explained how Vegapunk managed to replicate the Paramestries, but this scene is very interesting. I even saw some people thinking it was the scene where Sanji... Damn, no, no, here is the scene where Nami gives him a shock, blacks out, falls and already dives to attack them. So this scene is very cool. We also have the arrival of leaving this hint, uh, this air that Rob Lute is going to prank in Egghead. This scene of Luffy materializing the glasses, right? Which is also there. This one here for me is a wallpaper. This one I already got. Uh, deep on my PC, but look, I'm going to be honest with you guys. How did Luffy materialize glasses there, huh? Is it poetic license or does he really have the power uh, of turning everything you want into reality? How far does this stone force go? Now, another part also, folks, is uh, the tail of Ayumu Sama. Look at this here. For me, this is a little devil's tail. It's the opposite of him. It can't be, I don't know, an appendix or anything. It's the tail of the demon fruit. I love this theory. I've already made this video in the video. I will leave the link here in the card for you, but check out this theory of the opposite of Nika being really the devil, because Luffy is inspired in the cartoons Robert Mossa, that cartoon. From the beginning of the 20th century, there was always this kind of little devil. Look at this, this looks like a demon's tail. For me, this is the best spoiler of this opening. Another frame that I think is very cool is Morgan's hiding Vivi. You can hardly see her there, but with his hand, magic of pause, we can observe her. Is lost in the middle. You can't tell what happened. Sure. So that only follows the animation. After that, this really cool scene, which is Dragon and Vega Punk in Onhara, paying tribute. So I think it's going to be a pretty beautiful scene. They chose a more black and white frame. They might utilize that. During the flashback, there's this scene here that maybe many didn't understand, but these are the Ohara books, right? When they throw them in the water to save... I'll leave some fragments there for the future and the salt came with the giant of saved. With beautiful scenes here, place to honor the scene. Doubts. We have the frames here of the confrontations that will change the course of the world. Shanks, Kid, Blackbeard, Lau, and of course Garp and Aokiji only. Grad fight, I really want to see Shanks' Kamutari, but I also really want to see the friendly cat of Garp, my friends. In these scenes here is where we also have the best transitions, because you see, there's a scene where they're tired and then Cole becomes running in. Man, this animation here is wonderful. This other scene that I found very beautiful is this frame here of Kobe running away with Ribari. And in the background, we have Avalo Pizarro with his commander. Controlling me, the island of Hatnozu, man. I think this is for those who only follow the anime. Witnessing this scene speaks, man, what is happening? Why is Ratnozu getting involved in this scene? It's also angry. One of the best scenes in this part of the introduction. Then here, remember when I said there may be some spoilers about the lost manga in... Every opening always has... Every opening has this... These are things that we can theorize about in this part where the vice admiral of alcohol members of his... There is a very quick transition where you can see Kizaru with them. Does it mean something? Still, uh-huh. Ha, ha, the guy oh. is an admiral. He's a mariner. They're all mariners. So like... But is it... Uh, the fact of this transition, putting Kizaru with the members of the sword, keep it with you, take it in your heart, because... Toa said, Teseki... There's the Sakazu thing with a little sword drawn uh, on his arm. I don't know how a vice admiral would submit his resignation letter. That's how it works. You submit the resignation letter. It just isn't accepted. I don't know if a fleet admiral can do this thing, but he has the sword drawn. You can't disregard these things. Maybe he created the sword, but kept climbing the ranks there and is a secret boss. Why not? Why does Sakazuki have all this thing? Being a Yakuza boss, the Japanese dialect he uses is a dialect widely used by the Yakuza. Then you see, uh, he has a tattoo. He was cutting a bonsai in this cover story that comes up with this little sword. It might be, it could be, okay? But Sakazuki still has to pay a price for his roaring, for his absolute justice. Uh, delete it, but Kizaru showing up here with the sword members and after everything he showed dancing with Mika, maybe feeding Luffy. I liked it. I like this here. I'm going to take this with me. Maybe he is part of it. Maybe a hidden agent helping necessarily part of your order. This picture here caught me too, which is the hero's charge very fast. A very quick frame that has a Kuma releasing sparks. They put here a very beautiful animation of him towards Egghead. After that, we even have Kizaru coming back 
whose introduction is very beautiful. It's really something. One more wallpaper I consider here. And him without drinking, showing laser, man, it's wonderful. If it was Kizaru who gave food, for Luffy, he will become my favorite admiral. I already like him. I already think a very cool character, he being divided here between justices of Sakazuki and Kuzan. So, like, this scene of him with Sentomaru is really cool. It's beautiful, right? Him participating in the parties, he's getting upset when Kuma agrees. He was surprised that Kuma will agree. To really hear his consciousness. He's a very cool character made by Oda and is developing Kizaru very well. We have some scenes that are very quick, like that, very hard to see that you can... Take note that it's Quan's symbol, but also here we have Mika's silhouette. Look how cool this is, not just that. When we have this scene here of Luffy, Copper and JP being affected by Bonnie's powers, you have there in the background, well hidden, the silhouette of who it is. Panda Shepherd. The biggest villain in One Piece up to this point. That's Saturn, already showing up there, look how cool he had noticed. I'll show you the pieces out. That's why it's good to pause the frames because you can catch all the inserted easter eggs and the opening ends in a very cool way, which is with, with Vivi and Bonnie in a memory po. And this scene is very quick, it gives the feelings that the po is with uh, Vivi. Look, passing by it seems like there is something with a connection, but let's be fair here and pause the ferns, you will see that Vivi is in front of a hole. And the little Po is the memory Po with a bonus. So there's no little Po with the life beauty. Because what I'm saying here could be a spoiler. From Vivi picking the fruit of the homeland. I'll explain this Po thing right away for those who are not very familiar with this idea. But look, it's a very quick transition. Okay, there is no Po with Vivi. She is here in front of that hole. Shows the Apo running away after the Cobra is killed. But guys, I'll be honest with you. The choice of these frames together... Because they don't happen simultaneously in the story. The memory lag happens a little after this reverb thing, right? A good time after it is revealed. So the choice of the animation team, the direction here to put Vivi in a transition to the Duckling, I guess, see, that has to take. It's the same as Kizaru there in the transition with the members of his... And why am I saying this? For those who aren't very familiar with this concept, it came about when it's unveiled the uh, Lilina Efertari, the four mother. Vivi, she was responsible for spreading all the polyglyphs around the world on a fateful day. How she spread these stones around the world. The only way to do this quickly and efficiently, especially in places where the world government would not have access like the others, the year island of bundle men is with the fruit of the little pot they've already asked me about the fruit of the door of bueno but the it's not quite this global level and you have these things really put in places that the global government didn't have access to. The pop of fruit is the best choice, makes a lot of sense. In fact, the little paw was later revealed to be a cat's paw. We didn't even know which animal it was. We even thought it was a bear's paw because the kuma means bear. He already looks like a big bear, but no, the paw is from a cat. And there in Arabastia, you have the cats uh, being adored by the people, the sea cats even. These animals are revered. They even have them in the house of X status. So Lily could be the holder. From the fruit of the little paw in the past, Kuma was called the hand of liberation. Look at this magnificent thing. If the Kuma does end up dying the hunger, could go to Vivi, maybe reborn from the Tangerina foot from Nami. This theory makes a lot of sense. I love this theory. And they put this frame of Vivi for the little paw. Got it? So it can indeed be a spoiler. Okay, and then did you catch a cold? A prize that you can theorize about to some point that you found curious. Write the second one here. Write your idea, your theory. And if you like this video and want more videos like this or of this style, hit the like button because it's my thermometer. Okay, until next well, time. Cheers. Put this was.